Okay. Your uh, final exam is going to be on November 30th. The uh, announcement will come out on the one week before the final exam. And in the announcement, the type of information that you have, it will be included with this similar to what I'm showing here. Um, if anything changes, you will notice the changes. The number of experiments that you're, you will be responsible, which experiments, which part you will be responsible for. And uh, this is an example, experiments one to seven, and then experiment nine and 10. Number of multiple choice questions and number of uh, free response questions will be uh, will be indicated in the in that announcement. So if you need to know before going to exam how many multiple choice questions, you can just check that check that announcement. Otherwise, just prepare for the for the exam and you should be uh, you should be fine. So you will have um, some of the uh, questions based on the procedure like procedures that you have for experiment three. Do you remember experiment three? Experiment three was determining empirical formula. When you determine empirical formula, you find the mass of iodine, you find the mass of zinc, and then you do the calculation. So if it says procedure for that experiment, means like, how did you find mass of iodine? Do you remember how you found the mass of iodine already? If you remember, you can tell me what is the, the now as a review. So in order to determine the mass of iodine, just as a reminder, uh, you are measuring the mass of the test tube that contain iodine. It was like closed test tube. You measure the mass of that. Then you transfer the iodine into evaporating dish. Take the empty test tube back to the scale. You measure the mass of empty test tube with the cork you subtract and you get the mass of iodine. So questions like that. So you need to know. And I was, you know, I will be a little bit more direct to tell you because I don't want you to memorize all the procedures, at least have an idea. How would you perform experiment, like specific experiments that will be in the announcement? Uh, like for experiment 10, I also, in, when I was teach explaining this experiment 10 last class, I did challenge the students. I said, how do you find the, the pressure for the gas? And then I did explain, I hope that you were listening, that since the flask was open to the environment using that pinhole, because it's open to environment, it's correct to assume that pressure inside the flask equals the pressure outside of the flask. So you measure, the pressure using barometer, which we have in the other room, and you record that as the pressure of the gas because the container was open to the environment. You measure the um, temperature for the gas. And the question is going to be, how do you measure the, what do you measure or how do you measure the temperature for the gas? Well, based on the procedure, you measure, you don't stick the thermometer into the flask you measure the temperature of the boiling water. And since that flask was inside the boiling water for, or in the hot water bath for like five minutes, the temperature inside and outside of the flask is assumed to be the same. And you measure the temperature of the boiling water. Have they measured the volume for the gas? The flask that you use, it says 125, but that doesn't mean that you had 125 milliliter of gas. You had to actually perform experiment. You had to fill up the, the flask with water and then measure with the graduate cylinder how much. For today's experiment, like experiment 11, I just challenge you, like not to challenge you, but I ask you, how do you find delta T? So to find the delta T for the experiment, for today's experiment, you find the melting point of pure solvent, and then you add the substance or the solute, you make a solution and you measure the melting point of the solution. Again, the difference is delta T. What is KF? KF is a constant number and it will be given. Molality, you find it by calculations and all that. 
So because I want the procedures, like how to do the experiment, like in detail, I limit the number of those experiments. I, I give like two or three experiments every semester. I say, okay, for this semester, I want these ex three experiments. You know the procedure in detail. So you understand that it's not just like following, you know, the cookbook is like making sense out of the, the procedure also. How do we measure the atmospheric pressure in the room and say, this is the atmospheric pressure for the gas that I'm using for the calculation because of that pinhole that you have in the gas, in the container. So uh, those, the number of the experiments that you have to, um, those experiments that I want you to be responsible for the procedure as well, I will modify, or if it's the same, then you will be responsible for those experiments for the procedure part. And uh, the experiment, of course, covers the um, understanding of the, um, of the, the experiment. So what's the purpose of using phenylphthalein? So you have to understand that phenylphthalein is an acid-based indicator and it will show endpoint of the reaction. So if you don't remember at all, like oh, phenylphthalein, did I ever use phenylphthalein? I, I, sometimes I indicate which experiment. I say like for experiment, titration of the acid base or strong acid with strong base or strong base with weak acid, based on the title of the experiment you used, what's the purpose of using uh, phenylphthalein? Then you should remember that yes, use phenylphthalein as the, as the uh, indicator. So the uh, questions are not uh, very hard. Those are questions that you have seen it. You have seen them before. Like, uh, Experiment two, you have physical property and uh, chemical properties. Okay. So you have an experiment that is, experiment three is based on empirical formula. Of course, how do you do the, find the, the if I don't allow a scrap paper, I will not include the calculation, but I could at, at least ask you, how do you, find empirical formula, would say you would calculate the number of moles of each, and then you would find the, the um, so it's not heavy on calculation, okay? The exam is not heavy on the calculation. It's based on more, more based on the uh, understanding of the, of the experiment. For experiment four, which is mole, calculation for mole, or understanding of the mole, um, just how do you find the number of moles? Basically, again, if I put the problem, how to do the calculation is going to be, um, then you would have scrap paper and you have, uh, and you have a calculator, access to calculator. Uh, for, you have another experiment for conduct, uh, testing for electrolytes. What is electrolyte? If you, you are given like set of couple, reagent or, or substance, you should recognize is it electrolyte or not? Is it strong electrolyte or weak electrolyte based on that experiment? Is it strong acid? Then is a strong electrolyte. Strong base is electrolyte. I, I will not use compounds that you, you did not test it. I will use the from the list of the compounds that you have at least tested. So for those compounds, the 10 compounds that you tested, you should classify them based on strong electrolyte or weak electrolyte and understand that why is a strong electrolyte or weak electrolyte. In case the question is just asking, we have a strong acid, what do you expect? If you have a strong acid and the multiple choices, it's strong for electrolyte, weak electrolyte or non-electrolyte, then you should be able to recognize. Um, you had the experiment based on the titration, as I said, endpoint of the reaction, equivalence point, so you have those definitions. You are using standard to measure the concentration of an unknown sample. Uh, and you had chemical reactions, single displacement, double displacement reaction. For double displacement reactions, uh, if you are given like from that table, you had, remember you had 12, 12 different sets of the reactions that you wanted to see if there is evidence for reaction or no evidence for reaction. 
and if there is evidence reaction, if you had the precipitate or not. So if you are given the table for solubility and you are given two compounds, A and B, you mix them together, you should be able to predict there is a, there is a precipitate or not. I don't expect you to memorize it, the, the table, the solubility table, but if the solubility table is given to you and you have the two compounds, is there a precipitate or not? Do you expect a reaction or not? And if you expect a reaction, what is the chemical reaction? What compound is going to form? And what is the, uh, the ionic equation and net ionic equation? So make note of that, please, and practice. So you know how to predict if there is a, per a precipitate or not using the, uh, using the uh, solubility table. And if there is a precipitate, you have the, um, the chemical equation, write the chemical equation, write the, the uh, ionic equation, complete ionic equation, and net ionic equation. Uh, is the experiment that I usually pick, I, since I have like 12 different reactions, I pick like different one for different semester. But that's the, that is the experiment that I usually, and I very, you know, I like to let the students know, be careful of this experiment. Make sure you know how to write these three types of reactions. And um, then I will give you the, the uh, or if I give like complete ion equation, and then choices of what, which one is the net ionic equation should be able to recognize it. So if you know how to write the, or how to come up with the net ionic equation, multiple choice question is going to make it even easier for you. Oxidation reduction reaction, we didn't do all parts, different parts of it. For the face-to-face -face class, we did only parts of it. Uh, and partially, like um, three parts out of five. Um, and if you noticed here, I did not put that on the, on the exam and I'm not going to do it for your class either. Uh, for experiment nine, it was chemistry of the copper. For chemistry of the copper, if you are given a step or, or a reaction for one of the steps, um, then you should recognize what type of reaction is that? Is that a combustion reaction? Is it like a double displacement reaction? Is it a single displacement reaction? And what type? That's, that's the basically you know, purpose of that experiment. So um, I, since this is not a, um, a lecture, I look for more like an understanding of that experiment. Let's say I give like two or three steps to you, the equation for three steps reaction. And then I say, when you do gravity filtration in this step, which chemicals are you removing? What would be removed? What is left on the filter paper? So on the last step, when you are, you are um, filtering the copper, the, when you want to just get that gray, red color copper that stays on the filter paper and you wash it with water, you wash with everything, what goes to the filter based on that chemical equation that you have in front of you, you should be able to recognize what is being filtered out because this is the lab, okay? Uh, so what is being filtered out is anything that was soluble. So if you see like AQ designation for any part of the chemical equation and you put that in the filter paper, of course it will go through. That's the definition for solution. What will be separated? Everything that is solid, it will stay on the filter paper. Everything that is aqueous or soluble in the liquid is going to go uh, in water. It will go through the filter paper. And uh, that's what I'm saying based on understanding of the um, of the experiment. So I, I give you last step of the experiment. I say we, are, we have copper sulfate and we add magnesium or the zinc, whichever you use in the experiment. The product is copper plus magnesium sulfate. I said we filter this and the that's part of the experiment. When you filter it, what will go through the filter paper? What's, what's in the filter? What's on the filter paper? So um, just understand filtration is for separation of solid from the liquid. Anything that is solid would stay on the filter paper. Anything that is in solution, it will 
go through the filter paper. And what else? Is that enough for the review? Yes? Okay, perfect. Uh, so that was experiment uh, nine. So experiment 10 and experiment 11, I did talk about it when you we were talking about procedure. Uh, how would you uh, find the temperature for the gas or how would you find pressure or the temperature for the gas? Just basically more of the data collections. And I would do the same for uh, experiment 11. So I can bring you questions. How do you find the change in freezing point or how do you find the, uh, the molality if I give the, the formula to you? So if I don't include experiment 11, I will, that would be clear on the, on the announcement. So I'm not testing everything that you have learned in this class, but I want to make sure that the ones that I'm at least telling you that it will be, you will be responsible, you understand the, the, the experiment, you understand the technique. Like if you have a yellow color flame, what does it mean? I did spend like two class time or maybe more talking about this. Yellow color flame means incomplete combustion. That means you don't have enough air. How would you take care of it? You open the cylinder, you open the air valve more and you change, make sure that the color is changed to blue color. Um, any questions for me? Okay, to calculate your final grade, I follow the syllabus. As many questions, a point that is coming from pre-lab assignments, the data sheet assignments, as many points that is coming from the final exam, I will add them up and the good thing, even for like my face-to-face -face classes, when I'm calculating the final exam, I only deal with the numbers. I don't, of course I remember most faces, but I deal only with the numbers. So if you look at the, the grading policy, how your final grade is, is calculated, you should be able to estimate how your final grade is, what you know is going to look like. So I don't change the syllabus at this point after the first or second week, or because if I did change it, I would have sent you announcement already about the change. I don't change the rules for grading during the semester. So by end of semester, I use the grading um, scale and grading um, final grade calculations uh, from the syllabus in order to uh, calculate and record. Final exam. For the lab, it's not the point to, is not determining a point for pass or fail of the class. It only has like maximum of 20%. But when you do good on the final exam, it guarantees that you keep the grade that you have prior to final exam or improves your, your final exam. I just want to make sure that is also on the record that I'm not changing the syllabus. My, my, which I'm not supposed to. And uh, also the calculation is based on the, the, what you have already. So if it says the final exam, the, the pre-lab is going to count for like 120 points, it will count for 120 points or 110 points. If you only turned in, let's say 11, and it says 120, I do the calculation based on 120 uh, this way. I say, okay, if you got 105 out of 110, what would be if you had out of 120? So it's just basically using the ratio, but I use Excel, so I don't make any, any uh, mistakes. So the calculation, it does not show up in D2L for you. D2L for me is a place to store the grades, so you have access to it, to see it. And for me, I have a safe place that is there, and Periodically, I downloads in case you know to have the hard copy or the to have the uh, Excel file of it. When I do the calculation, I use Excel, and then the I report the final grade to BC. Okay. Uh, 